Erica, it's so nice to have you here at the VGTS. Thank you for coming. Can't wait to hear you. Hey, everyone. You guys, am I coming in? Am I coming in? Yeah. Yep. Okay, awesome. Well, hey, everyone. Thanks for being here and thanks for having me. Um, hope everybody's staying healthy and safe out there. Um, again, my name's Erica Ferrio. I'm a river guide. I've been working for Arizona River Runners since 1997. I'm also an artist and um, I've been doing both. I've been building my art and my business together for about 15 years now. And uh, I don't have a degree in business, but I've been successful at what I do. And so I'm gonna just share a little about my own journey as an entrepreneur and some tips and suggestions and insights that might inspire you. Um, this talk is definitely like for the younger generation and the up and coming generation, but hopefully everybody can take something away from it. Um, I know, I know I will. So let's see if we can do this uh, share screen thing. Okay, let's see. All right, so let's begin with the question. <clears throat> Why would us river guides even consider starting our own business? Um, why consider pursuing and developing other skills and talents or education? Uh, especially if you're young and you're just getting started in Grand Canyon, you might think, well, why, why can't I just be a river guide forever? This is awesome. Um, and it is. Being a river guide is an amazing thing and something we should all be proud of. But you know, it's super hard work and eventually you're going to get burned out doing full-time river seasons. Um, your body might give out. You, you, you might want to start a family or maybe you want to go back to school. Um, we have these seasonal schedules and big chunks of time off. How do you want to spend that time? Uh, we need to rest. We want to travel. We want to spend time with family and friends. And um, of course, all that is super important. But what we don't want to have happen is for the years to go by and then all of a sudden you're 50 years old and the time to transition comes and you don't have anything else to fall back on. Um, you don't want at 50 or older to have to get a job that undermines your own talents and your own potential. Um, so, and uh, you know, these times of transitions can be planned or totally unexpected, like we are experiencing now during this pandemic. And right now, geez, I sure am glad I've got my little business as my backup plan. So um, uh, <clears throat> a lot of us river guides, you know, we're already inclined to do something different and something off the beaten path, obviously. <laughs> We're super independent and uh, we want to do our own thing and be in charge of our lives and schedule. And we're creative and we're critical thinkers. We're smart and trained to improvise. We're passionate and we're hard workers. And um, we're actually the perfect candidates for being successful entrepreneurs. And the cool thing is, is that you don't have to choose having a business over being a river guide or vice versa you know, you can do both and they can actually feed off of each other. You just have to decide to do it and, and make the commitment and do it. Um, so what if you don't have a clue about what else you might want to do? Well, you know, you're totally going to have to figure that one out on your own, but it may be helpful to ask yourself questions like, you know, what are my other talents? Who are my role models and what do they do? What do I enjoy doing? And is, is that something that I could do when I'm old? Um, what's meaningful to me? Could it be meaningful to other people? And so much so that they would pay, pay, pay me to do it? Um, and who are those people and where are they? And how will I find them? And how are they going to find me? So this is part of how we can integrate our river guiding life with what we choose to do for our own craft or business. Um, and you think of all the people just in our GCRG community. Uh, think of all the people you've guided and will guide down the river and all the people who visited Grand Canyon and love Grand Canyon. I mean, it's one of the seven natural wonders of the world for God's sakes. Um, 
So if you can somehow connect your business to Grand Canyon or take your inspiration from Grand Canyon into your business or craft, it's most certainly going to be to your advantage. <laughs> I wanted to include this one. It's the only one I had of uh, humpback chubs to just compliment Emily's awesome talk. But um, so obviously you don't wanna be a guide on the river blatantly selling your, or promoting your other skills or craft, right? I mean, that's just totally inappropriate. But inevitably, your passengers are going to ask you, so, you know, what do you do on the off season? Um, and in a totally sincere and personable and classy way, you can be like, oh, well, I'm an artist. And oh, well, what kind of art do you do? Um, I paint really bright and beautiful pictures of Grand Canyon. Oh, how cool. Um, do you have a website? Actually, I do. You know, so um, if you take the time to connect with people on the river and you share your knowledge and you share your humor, you'll not only make a new friend, but you're going to make their Grand Canyon experience that, that much better. And they're going to probably remember you forever. Um, and some of them will want to support you by buying your art or craft because it'll be meaningful to them as well. Um, you know, a decent portion of my art sales come from passengers and another huge portion comes from my own fellow river guides and Grand Canyon community. So <clears throat> yeah, thanks everybody for buying my art. Um, you know, other examples, uh, when folks ask the great Lindsay Huck what she does in the off season, you know, it's snack time on her boat and she's breaking out the huppy bars. You know, her business is doing awesome and her business, um, her idea was born right here in Grand Canyon. Um, Kelly O'Keefe uh, started her business, Fun Love and Fleece Wear, and when her passengers see her and her crew wearing all those cute fleece skirts, you know they're going to all want one too, you know, you know, let alone all the rest of the guides. So uh, Brad Dimmick, with his incredible stamina and zest, he's still guiding, but he's got fretwater boat works. He builds custom dories. I mean, talk about developing a skill. Um, some of my other river mates, Doug Lubis and Jason Moore, for example, are they're guiding full time, but they also do um, really awesome, thoughtful, small construction jobs and handyman jobs. And most of their work comes from our community. Um, so there's, there's a lot of people who are going to want to support you um, because of who you are and how you do it. Um, so maybe you do have an idea for a business, but you just don't quite know how to start. Uh, it's helpful to start with some sort of vision or plan. Um, you can keep a notebook. I keep one in my purse every day. I write down your ideas, meet with peers who can give you good advice and who have some similar experience. But uh, remember, it's not going to happen overnight. Your vision is not going to happen overnight. It has to evolve. Um, I think it's better to take baby, baby steps. You know, if you try to do it all at once, it's going to be totally overwhelming. Um, it's a process and your learning curve is going to be steep at first and it's okay. You know, let things unfold, unfold and evolve naturally. You'll get better at it and you'll get more ideas along the way. It all builds on itself. You know, my business has taken years to get to where it is now. Um, you know, art's always been a part of my life ever since I was little. And it's super funny because I'd never been into painting landscapes and I actually found them quite boring. <laughs> but uh, I was about five years into my guiding career and I began to feel inspired to try and paint Grand Canyon. And it was super hard. My paintings totally sucked. But uh, I practiced and I practiced and over a few years I got better and eventually I developed my own style and um, some of my friends would say, hey, you should make those into cards. I'd buy one. And I was like, huh, you know, and the light bulb went off and I was like, really, could I do that? Well, why not? You know, what do I have to lose? So, but, you know, I, I had the benefit of being surrounded by successful Grand Canyon artists and entrepreneurs during my very early adult years in Flagstaff. 
um, I did a seven year internship with Phyllis Hogan, um, renowned ethnobotanist, and she owns Winter Sun Trading Company in downtown Flagstaff. Uh, both of her daughters were river guides at the time and had started successful businesses. You probably know them, Denise Tracy, she started the Super Sap Company and Deanne Tracy. Um, started Peak Sense and Sister Creations. Um, also in that same building I worked were Dougal Bremner and Sue Bennett, um, bless their hearts, uh, Dave Edwards, Bruce Aiken, Kate Thompson, and just a block away, John Running and Rachel Running and Shanto Begay and Don and Laura Kish. And I know Margo, you joined them later. Um, you know, these were my role models and I thought they were the coolest people on the planet. I still do. Um, I never really thought that I could do what they could do. And it's definitely taken me time to build my self-confidence. But I am so glad that back then, I decided that I would pursue my art. Um, my full-time river season of eight to 10 trips a year slowly transitioned to four to five trips a year as my art began making more money. And right now, four trips, my art, my family feels like a good balance, but <clears throat> I still have to work at it. I need a sip of water. Um, you know, and there's definitely a certain amount of blind faith that goes into trusting yourself that your own thing is going to work and actually make money to support you and your family. And there's certainly been low periods and times when I've doubted myself and questioned what I'm doing. Um, you do have to commit to your path again and again, and you do have to believe in yourself and trust that if you put your heart and soul into it, it's going to pay off. Um, I often say you'll never get to the top of the mountain if you keep switching paths. So you got to stay true and stay committed and one step at a time. So <laughs> let's talk about a couple of actual things that you can do to get, um, to help yourself get on track and stay on track. You know, you read those sort of semi annoying articles, like what are the seven things that every successful person does before noon? Well, <clears throat> there's definitely some truth to that. And no matter what stage you're at in your journey as an entrepreneur or a student continuing your education or anybody with a big project that you want to accomplish, um, there are some self-discipline habits you're going to want to practice and, and make them actual habits, you know, meaning that's, that's just how you operate. Um, I put together my own seven things for the purpose of this talk that I feel are essential and have helped me. Um, Okay, number one, <laughs> uh, good work habits. It's gonna be hard work and just accept that fact. Um, in the art world, I've seen artists who don't have a ton of talent, natural talent, but enough, and they're killing it with their art because they work really hard at it and they promote themselves and they're constantly connecting with people and participating in events. And of course, there's the total opposite. I've seen incredibly talented artists who are practically starving because they just can't seem to get it together. This is from my title of the talk. This is the get up and get the bacon started part. <laughs> you know, so get up and get up early and get going. And you know, it's good to be busy. It keeps us out of trouble. Um, and oftentimes, I know for me, just getting started on your task is the hardest part. Just make yourself sit down and do it. You know, usually once you sit down and get started, you'll find that you're really into it and actually enjoying the work. <clears throat> True story. Okay, time management and scheduling. And this is a really super, super important one. Um, you have to be intentional with your time. And this is another way that a river guiding life can be integrated and be used to your advantage. So I know, of course, this year is different because of the pandemic, but usually when my river schedule comes out in February, in February then I schedule the rest of my year. Um, I use my river trips as benchmarks and as deadlines uh, for getting stuff done. You know, we all need deadlines. If it weren't for deadlines, I know for me, I wouldn't get anything done. So. Um, and as an example, 
Uh, last year, I put on a big show at West of the Moon Gallery with 12 new paintings, um, all with a connecting theme and story. And it was a huge undertaking. Um, I gave myself only about 14 months to complete the work. And during that time, I also did four river trips. I maintained my existing business and making cards and prints to keep um, all of the retail spaces stocked up. And of course, all of the joyful responsibilities and obligations that come with having a family. Um, you know, if I didn't set myself deadlines and goals throughout the entire year, a year ahead of time, there is no way I could have pulled it off. So number three, goal setting, long-term and short-term. Um, you know, and goals can just be things that need to get done, things that need to get accomplished. So sit down and figure out just what are your goals for this week? What needs to get done? Prioritize and also, you know, be realistic. Um, what would you like to accomplish before your next river trip? Maybe you have a whole month off in between two trips in the, in the middle of the summer. You know, what are you going to do with that time? Make lists. I'm the queen of making lists. Without them, I'd totally be lost. Um, every Sunday night, I sit down and write out what I would like to accomplish for that week. And it's, it's just so satisfying to cross stuff off your list. <clears throat> Let's see. <laughs> uh, number four, root work routines and organization. Um, in the big picture, being organized and having routines are actually gonna free up time and space to do the things that are just for fun. Um, what I do is I do the hardest and most tedious things in the morning and I save my creative work for the afternoons. Um, or sometimes, you know, I'll do all of my tedious desk, desk stuff or sort of business stuff, you know, on Monday and Tuesday, then I have the rest of the week to just paint and exercise and goof off. Um, you know, just like we tell our kid, just, you know, especially now that school's online, um, you know, get your schoolwork done first, then you can play. You know, it can truly change your whole day to not have a task looming over you. Um, stop procrastinating. Okay, number five, stay curious and informed and connected and read. Reading stories about other amazing people can be really inspiring. You know, read stories about historical figures and other artists. Um, I just finished Michelle Obama's book and holy cow, I mean, talk about inspiring. What a woman, amazing. Um, stay tuned into current affairs. Keep up on what's going on in your own community and in the world. You know, I always go out to galleries and sort of like spy on other artists, you know, um, you know, check out what they're up to. What are they painting? What's inspiring them? Um, how much are they charging for their art? Uh, net, network with folks, use social media, and definitely don't let it use you, okay? Stuff is addicting. Um, let's see, next slide. Tap into your resources, okay? We are so lucky to have each other in our Grand Canyon community. You know, these are the people who are gonna support you. They're gonna buy your stuff and they're gonna pay for your services. But also, you know, too, there's, they're going to be willing to sit down and talk with you and help you along your way. I know I've met with so many people along my way. I've had lots of help, and I'm forever grateful. Um, you know, there's also the nonprofit organization like this one, GCRG, and the Whale Foundation. They are here specifically to help in, and inform and support us all. So don't be afraid to ask for help, okay? One more and maybe it's the most important and sometimes overlooked, um, is healthy, healthy self-care routines. You know, it all starts with us. Um, there are most certainly things that you can do to take care of yourself that are, that are gonna increase your energy and your degree of motivation and focus and your attitude and just general outlook on life. Um, you know, this means getting good sleep, uh, eating healthy, nutritious food, exercising, not drinking too much, and surrounding yourself with other cool, happy, and motivated people. Um, 
you know, if you're in a toxic relationship and feeling hungover more days than not and eating a ton of junk food, you know, of course you're not going to feel motivated and you're going to feel depressed and have low self-esteem. Um, anyways, that could be a whole other topic entirely. So I will just stop there, but just know if you're not taking good care of yourself, you're not even giving yourself a chance to succeed. Okay. So let's wrap this up. I don't know how I'm doing on time, but I think we're getting close. Um, you know, we talk about success and what does that even mean? You know, what does that mean on a personal level? Um, what does it mean to be successful? Uh, I think most of us have realized that success doesn't necessarily equal being rich, materialistically speaking. You know, fortunately for us river folk, we're pretty, we're pretty happy with a simple life. It's, it's better that way and better for the planet. Um, I mean, I think that success means that you're happy and that you found a purpose in life and that your purpose is meaningful. And if it's meaningful to you, Chances are it's going to be meaningful to someone else. Um, you know, success is staying connected to friends and family and having our health. So, you know, ask yourself, what do you want out of this life? This one life that we have. <laughs> and what can you give back? It's all going to go by really fast. And it does go by really fast. Um, don't let your days and your years just slip away. We all possess something that's truly unique that makes us who we are. And for me, it's such a joy. I just feel so blessed to be able to share that with the world. So, you know, and, and success is not what you do, but how you do it. So whatever you decide to do, do it to the best of your ability. Do it with pride and integrity. Do it from your heart. Live your days with intention and purpose and take good care of yourself, right? If you do these things, how can you not have a happy and successful life? So go on and get out there and kick some ass, okay? And stay safe. Don't get sick. You guys still hear me? Okay, I'm everyone. I'm, you're unmuted. Yay! Yay! Thank you, Thank you, Erica. Thank you. You're welcome. Love you guys. You, that was amazing. <laughs>